Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to go over the Big Lens app. It's for iPhone. Um, right here, this is the home screen when you open the screen. This picture in the middle is uh, one of their sample pictures that you can use and practice on. Uh, if you look up top, there's three tabs. There's Load Photo, Take Photo, and Sample. Um, load, load Photo just lets you load pictures from your photo library. Take Photo goes to your camera and you can take a picture and then edit it. Sample uh, just pulls up this picture again if you are clicking around and you can use their sample picture. Under sample there's the gearbox. You have some settings. We'll go to that. Uh, restore last session. Save the camera roll. You can turn those on or off. Uh, you can pick which size image you want so when you're done it will upload in that size or, or save in that size to your camera roll and you can link up with Dropbox and Picasa and there's some tutorial videos down here and Facebook page for the company and things like that okay now let me take you through the basic settings if you go to basic this is the screen you'll see you have several different features here up top you have HDR feature if you click that on It'll turn your picture into an HDR look. Across the bottom, you have aperture, filter, lens, circle, linear, and compare. I'll go through each of these features. If you look at the girl, there's obviously a red circle across her uh, and some information how to move it and how to reshape or size that circle. So if you move with one finger, you can move it around. If you go two fingers, you can make it bigger or smaller. Now, wherever the red is, is your main point of focus. Around the red, that's not in red, is going to be blurry or out of focus. So you can see I put it over her face. The background is now blurred out. And her face is still very clear. However, some of the background immediately behind her is still uh, in focus. So it looks a little bit weird. This isn't necessarily the best picture to use the circle with. If you had like a circular object you wanted to keep in focus or something, that'd probably be better. Now if you go to the linear tab down at the bottom, now you got more of a rectangle shape. You can make that bigger or smaller, but you can also use two fingers and just turn your fingers and you can angle it however you'd like. Now both sides of her are blurry and she is in focus and just what's above her is in focus. So you can play with that depending on your picture. That could be helpful. If, if you look at the bottom right, you have the Compare tab. Compare tab, if you just hold it down, it'll give you before and then after. So you can mess with that. Now we're going to go to the Aperture setting. Aperture, you see, gives you different apertures that you can choose from. The higher number or smaller aperture is going to give you less blur so that's 3.5 now let's go to 1.8 for the opposite extreme much more blur just like if you were using a real DSLR now this uh, this little line between the two uh, flowers makes your actual picture the, the in focus part a little blurry and it just helps to uh, blend in the background to the the main picture in some cases that might be the effect you want to go for just kind of a dreamy scenario but if you notice right now we're in 1.8 which is the most blur if I take this all the way down to nothing it looks kind of strange like almost like a perfect line of blur which would not be what it would really look like if you took it on a real camera so one way to kind of fix that is to put a little bit of blur on it and try to blend it in a little bit but in this case you'd, you'd want to go with like a less blur that looks more natural at 3.5 the filter tab takes you to this screen right here where along the bottom you'll have bunches of filter choices to choose from there's five different pages of them and you can just flip around and see what you like you can see them applied in real time to your photo and you could pick what you think looks best. 
I like this uh, flare flare one. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep that one on there, and then I'm gonna take it to the lens tab. Show you what that does. When you pull up the lens tab, uh, all these circles with different shapes show up at the bottom. All this does is when you click on it, if there's anything like a reflective kind of glare or a light in the background, it will give it the look of that shape as if it's sparkling off in that shape that you choose. This is now that we went over the basic setting, I'm going to go ahead and show you the advanced. I, I loaded this photo off my phone. These are my two little boys. We took this at a fair. Uh, it's Brody on the left with his face painted and Jackson on the right. So we're going to hit this advanced tab. When we're doing our layout, uh, if you remember in the basic setting, it was just a circle or you had the rectangle, which you could adjust. In this one, uh, the first option is a brush. And what that allows you to do is just brush on the red. Any area you don't want uh, to be out of focus, you would brush it in. If you touch the brush uh, tab, it gives you a size so you can be much more detailed. You can zoom the picture in by using two fingers and spreading go back down and you can uh, be very specific and zoom in and go real tight on it um, but one of the cool features they have with this is uh, you can just paint it and get it as close as you can you want to stay close but if you go over a little bit that's fine so you get it real close here And I'm just going to go around the edges real quick. Try to show you a quick example. So I could be a little tighter, uh, but I just want to try to make this so the video is not too long. So you just finger paint everything on. Get it as close as you can. And then what you do, uh, if the fourth tab over is auto. If you just click that auto button, it's going to automatically crop into what it thinks you want. It did a pretty good job. Uh, on the right, there's some areas that really shouldn't be in there, but for the most part, it did a really good job. So what I'll do, I can just zoom in, scoot this over, and if you notice, there's an eraser button. Erasing is just going to erase anywhere you mask that you didn't want to. And again, you have the size that you want, and so I can just erase this area that it miscropped. If I screw up, I could just hit the uh, arrow up top, that's the undo, and it'll take me back to what I just screwed up. So I'm going to do it real quick. I'm not going to do it perfect just because it's, oops, so undo. Because uh, i just given you examples so you know how to use it. So I'm just going to kind of do it real quick. Doesn't need to be perfect. But you could be obviously super detailed with this if you wanted to. So I undid the brush tool so that I could show you the lasso tool. Uh, instead of uh, painting in with your finger with the brush tool, lasso tool, you just circle around the area that you want to highlight. We'll just draw right around them. And basically when you let go of the screen, the tool is going to automatically fill in the middle area. and then like the paintbrush you can hit the auto and it will try to correct it the best it can and then you can erase areas that uh, it didn't properly do okay so I got it close enough to where I want it now uh, if you notice between Jackson's feet Jackson's the one in the green uh, I guess he's red now but uh, the one on the right he still has red between his feet on the ground. Uh, I left it red because if you're taking the, the picture with a depth of field, that ground is directly under him, so it most likely would be in focus. You could blur uh, the bottom if you wanted to, and uh, I'll show you. If you kind of mess up some of your edges, it doesn't really matter too much because when we go to the next screen, you can actually still correct them. So we'll go next. And now we have a little bit of blur all around them. We can still adjust it with our aperture like before. So we can get a lot of blur if we want. If you can see, that's much more blur. 
and the edges of them look a little bit blurred out because it's probably a little bit close to them. Uh, let me take it to probably 3.2. Okay, I like that. Now if you have an area that you want to uh, fix up on the edge a little bit, there's a focus and blur tool. If you look at that, it's the fourth and fifth tool. Uh, I'll show you some blur tool first. And again, you can adjust the size. But let me just show you a quick. I'm going to go through uh, Brody's hair here and then let go. Now, see how it blurs out? Now, focus is just the opposite. So you're just going to repaint that to focus it back in. And anywhere you paint, comes into focus so if you have an edge that was cut a little close and you don't like the way it's looking you can adjust it just by refocusing it and seeing if it looks a little bit better for you the edge of his shirt there looks a little bit here we go so he looks more in focus I kind of like that his fingers a little bit out of focus see if we can get that in all right so basically that that's how you do it and you can you can refocus stuff or blur stuff back out so all the filters remain the same uh, as you had in the basic setting you can play with those and adjust them to make it look the way you want it to there's a lot of pretty cool filters here I really kind of like that one on this so we'll leave that and uh, we can check what it looks like in HDR kind of bright some pictures look really good in HDR others don't but I really like the way that looks it definitely looks more professional than it did uh, when we first started and definitely doesn't look like a camera phone app anymore so I hope this helps I hope you get to play around with it and enjoy it I really love this app I think you guys will love it uh, let me know what you think